video is going to be a low spoiler book review of the new John Green book, Turtles All the Way Down. Obviously, John Green doesn't really need an introduction from me because he's pretty well known on YouTube already, but in case you've been living under a virtual rock for the past 10 years, he is the brother of Hank Green. They run Vlog Brothers, which is their sort of back and forth vloggy thing that they do every week, and they also do Crash Course, SciShow, Patreon stuff, and loads of YouTube programming and stuff. Brilliant. John has also been a novelist all this time. Two of his books have actually had movies come out that have been moderately successful, Paper Towns and The Fault in Our Stars, or Tiffios. I did a review of the Tiffios movie when that came out, so I'll put a link in the description to that. Turtles All the Way Down, or Tatwood, is the story of Aza Holmes, a 16-year-old girl who lives in Indianapolis, is in high school, and is trying to deal with her obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes. OCD. For real. Not the stereotype of you've got to clean everything within well, a mile radius or something, but the actual one where the invasive thoughts sneak in you and you end up in a thought spiral where everything else outside the spiral starts becoming less and less important and you just get stuck. Aza is particularly bad for having germophobic tendencies in her spirals. At the beginning of the story, Aza and her best friend Daisy, whose chief interests are Star Wars, fan fiction, and finding ways out of working for Chuck E. Cheese, find out about the disappearance of eccentric billionaire Russell Pickett, whose eldest son Davis Aza knew when they were younger. Daisy becomes temporarily obsessed with the monetary reward for finding Pickett, and drags Aza back into Davis's life to investigate. During this, Aza does manage to reform some level of good connection with Davis, who's so disillusioned with his father that he's kind of somewhat glad that he's gone. The two intrepid girls still end up investigating while dealing with high school, interpersonal relationships, and each other's minds. How does Aza cope with this significant change from her usual life? Will Daisy's Ray Chewbacca fanfic finally take off significantly? You'll have to read and find out. I really enjoyed this book on a number of different levels, so I'm going to sum them up in four headings. First is mental health awareness, then it's personal relatability, then it's plot, then it's characters. So the first section I'm going to talk about is mental health awareness. Mental health is literally one of the biggest themes in Tatwood, like Aza's OCD manifests in a really similar way to John Green's own OCD, because he's talked about having it on several episodes of his and his brother's podcast. The book really gives a lot of representation to this other, kind of less well-known version of OCD. A lot of people know of OCD, but they only see the stereotype, and this book actually is a lot more realistic than that stereotype. Aza's OCD also seems to lead to other mental health problems like depression and anxiety, or at least that's how I'm understanding them from my own experiences, because they are very similar to my own experiences, which, huh, it just really was very similar the way that she kind of seemed to interact with that stuff, as I did. This makes this book a fantastic one for talking about mental health. I really, really appreciate it on that front. I've seen other people who've said that it was so accurate that they almost felt a bit triggered by it, and I'd say that's pretty notable in that, you know, it's a really big signpost for how good this book is for showing mental health. Moving on from that, we come to personal relatability. Oh boy, I found myself relating a hell of a lot to this. It so many resonances between my own life and this book. Not because I have the same uh, OCD that, you know, Aza has in the book, but just because so many things in this really, really just felt really familiar. My own experiences with mental health, for example, sounded a lot like the stuff that happened in the book. Another bit that I felt I had a lot of resonance with was some bits between Davis and Aza's relationship. It really just... It reminded me a lot of some stuff that happened between me and Jamie, my girlfriend, a while back. We, we like, some bits just, like, we weren't in the same situation. We weren't having, like, just... Some bits really resonated. It sounded a lot like 
what happened between me and Jamie. Additionally, there's a sequence with Aza and Daisy in a car that was pretty emotionally raw for me because it, it sort of tapped into some stuff that I'd kind of bottled up a little bit. And ha, ah, jeez oh. Next up is plot, which I found quite interesting despite the fact that it does kind of follow the John Green formula, as many of his critics have said. The search for Pickett, and in particular the dealings with his kids, Davis and Noah, they really spoke to me in this current climate of, you know, eccentric to be nice billionaires and uh, sad children. It just really spoke to me on that, and another thing that really came across to me was that the book didn't just focus on the relationship between Aza and Davis. It also focused quite heavily on the relationship between Aza and Daisy, who were both excellent and it was excellently written and just I really, really enjoyed and appreciated the way that that sort of relationship stuff worked out. Finally, we come to characters. The easiest characters for me to love were Daisy and Aza, who were both really strongly defined, well-written young women who I just, I, I really, really liked their characters. Daisy's Star Wars obsession really did win me over quite early on, and I really enjoyed some of her development as the book went on. Aza as well had some really good character development, though because of some developments in the book it did make it rather distressing for me at times to like her as much as I did. Overall, I really like this book, and I do have some other criticisms, mainly focused around other representation, but I'm not going to go into that in detail, to be honest. I want to stay a bit positive on this. It's another classic John Green, and it's just as good as Tiffios. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this book, if you've read it, and what you're expecting if you haven't read it. I would love to know what you think, so let me know down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and that you remember to like and share it, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the thumbnails down below to see other videos by me, and I will see you guys next time.